On today's episode, we're talking about the latest developments with Tesla's artificial intelligence program, 4680 battery cell production updates, more news on the new Model S Plaid, the boring company going wide, big news for Tesla Solar, and we check out an official Tesla police car. So let's get going. Hey Elonites and Musketeers, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. Artificial intelligence has been the hot topic around the Tesla world recently. First, the launch of Pure Vision on the new Model 3 and Model Y, and then just the other day, we saw Tesla's director of artificial intelligence, Andre Carpathy, giving a 40-minute talk on the company's self-driving supercomputer at the 2021 conference on computer vision and pattern recognition. We know that Tesla uses a neural network to train its autopilot and self-driving software, and that work is done by a massive supercomputer, which should be upgraded at some point this year to an even more powerful system called Dojo. In Carpathy's presentation, the AI head stated that there are three main factors to get a neural network signal to work. Large amounts of video, clean data, and diverse scenarios to make the suite as well-rounded as possible. This could be a major factor in Tesla's decision to make its two mass market vehicles vision based for autopilot and self-driving. If large amounts of data is one of the biggest factors, the Model 3 and Model Y have dominated Tesla's sales numbers globally for some time, meaning they contribute more data to the neural network than the other two vehicles in Tesla's fleet. So it all makes sense. Andre showed us a photo of just how massive the existing AI supercomputer at Tesla is and he listed off a bunch of the specifications that I'm not going to pretend to understand right now. Maybe we'll put that on the screen, and if you know, you know, but Carpathy said that these specs make it roughly the number five supercomputer in the world during his presentation. He wouldn't get into any details on the upcoming Dojo system that Elon is still expecting to go live at some point in 2021, and from what Elon has said so far, Dojo will upgrade Tesla's AI learning from what he calls a two-dimensional system to a four-dimensional system. We're not sure entirely what that means, but I expect we'll be finding out this summer at the Tesla AI day that Elon has promised us. Mind you, this has only been announced in a couple of tweets, but just the other day he wrote, looking at holding Tesla AI day in about a month or so. We'll go over progress with Tesla AI software and hardware, both training and inference. Purpose is recruiting. It's reasonable to guess that AI Day will be pretty similar to the Autonomy Day that happened back in 2019 and Battery Day in 2020. I feel like the AI event is going to be by far the most technical presentation yet, and we'll probably hear more from Andre than we will from Elon. They're going to be speaking directly to experts in the field, and I won't be surprised if most of the details go straight over our meager heads, but it should still be fun to see. Tesla's revised documents for Gigafactory Berlin have been posted online, and they are a treasure trove of information. The documents provide some new details about Tesla's planned 4680 battery plant in Gigafactory Berlin, which Elon Musk said is on track to be one of the world's largest battery production facilities. They also outlined how the 4680 cells are produced. While some sections of the filing specifically about the planned 4680 battery cell plant in Giga Berlin were blacked out due to sensitive information that could not be made public, the documents show some important details about the upcoming facility. This includes the facility's cell production operations over four floors, with anode and cathode production on the first floor and tablet cell production on the third floor. The battery plant is massive, requiring large foundations similar to Gigafactory Berlin's Phase 1 zone. Tesla also provided a brief overview of how the new battery cell will be produced in the upcoming facility. I'm not going to try and read through all of the text here, which has been translated from German, just for the record. We can throw that up on the screen for the scientists among us. You dissect it and debate in the comment section below. I know we've been saying for months now that we're getting close to these next generation batteries coming into production, but releases like this, even small ones, really make it feel like we are almost there. I honestly think 2022 is really going to be the year when things just start to go nuts. Now that the new Model S Plaid Edition has been out in the world for a couple of weeks, we have some more information coming through about how it performs in real life. The good news comes from the folks at the EPA who have confirmed that the range advertised on the Tesla website for the Plaid 
with the 21 inch wheels combo is accurate at 348 miles. The default wheel option on the Plaid gets the range up to 390 miles according to Tesla, but that number hasn't been EPA verified yet. Probably because no one has bought a Plaid Model S with the 19 inch wheels, they just don't look very good. I can't imagine ordering a Plaid and not shelling out the extra cash for the bigger, better wheels, even if it does cost some range. 348 miles is still pretty good. The EPA has also confirmed that the upcoming long range version of the Model S will travel 407 miles on a single charge. I think Tesla had advertised it at 412 miles to begin with, but not really enough of a difference to get worried about. One interesting thing we have learned is that the battery pack in the new Model S for 2021 actually contains fewer cells than the previous version of the car. The pack size seems to have been reduced from 104 kilowatt hours down to an even 100 kilowatt hours. This means the new Model S is significantly more efficient than the old one as both the Plaid and long range models for 2021 have achieved more range than the vehicles made in 2020. Tesla has not only made the powertrain more efficient, but they have also increased the aerodynamics of the new car. Also, by dropping a few battery cells, they would reduce the overall weight of the car as well and thereby increase the range. Finally, we've got some real-world footage of an average Joe trying the Tesla steering yoke in a Model S Plaid for the first time. I feel like this guy's experience is very important to watch because unlike most of the reviews out there right now, he's not a Tesla YouTuber or a Tesla fanboy or even a Tesla owner. He's just a dude who works for a detailing company who's trying to drive the car around the parking lot into the shop. He starts off the video by saying that he's excited to try the steering yoke because he was a big fan of the car in Knight Rider back in the day. That had a very similar kind of steering wheel if you're not familiar with it. But you can tell that once he's trying to navigate around the lot and make tight turns that he's not having a very intuitive experience with the controls. It looks pretty awkward for him. And I know that Elon has said that once you get used to the thing that it's great, but I don't know. I feel like a good user interface should be something that people can pick up and feel confident with almost instantly. Like an iPhone, for example. Unless you're like 80 years old, no one has ever had to explain to you how to use an iPhone. They don't come with instruction manuals. The UI is just so intuitive that you can pick it up and just go. As much as we are Tesla fanboys, this new Tesla steering control is clearly not on that level. Over on Twitter, Elon replied to the everyday astronaut, shout out to you by the way, dig the live streams, who pointed out that if the yoke had a dynamic steering response, it would be much easier to use. So that's like the slower the car is moving, the more turning action you get from moving the wheel. So you wouldn't have to be doing these hand over hand movements that look so weird with this kind of control. Elon kind of admitted that, yeah, that would be better, but Tesla can't do dynamic steering yet, not until they switch over to a fully electronic drive-by-wire technology. And that's still a few years away. It kind of makes you think, why didn't they just wait to do the yoke until drive-by-wire was ready to go? I don't know, what do you guys think? Agree or disagree? Comment below. Hey, by the way, do you enjoy Tesla and SpaceX news? Obviously, you're still watching the video. Do you like getting letters? It's kind of fun, right? Then you're gonna love the Tesla Space newsletter. Link in the description below to sign up, it's free. We've talked before about how the Boring Company is able to minimize their costs by drilling the smallest size tunnel possible, which so far has been just 12 feet in diameter. But recently, they've been playing with the idea of maybe doing some wider tunnels for freight-based transportation. I think the idea they're getting at is a 12 foot tunnel for moving people and a 21 foot tunnel for moving product. According to the Boring Company, you can fit a shipping container through the original tunnel, but just barely. The large tunnels would then allow you to fit two shipping containers, again, just barely, about one foot of clearance around each container, and apparently the shipping containers would be moved through the tunnels by some kind of battery powered freight carrier. It's not clear yet if the company is in the market for or have already purchased a larger boring machine to make these freight tunnels possible. In other news, Tesla has signed an agreement with the new home builder Allset eHome to outfit a whole new community being built with Tesla solar panels, power wall, and electric vehicle chargers. This is a pretty huge step for Tesla's solar division. So far, the only way to get a Tesla solar roof was to either replace your existing roof or build your own house and hope that you can get a Tesla solar install to line up with your build window. 
this new option would be by far the easiest. Just order a new build from a developer that comes with a Tesla solar roof and power wall included. This initial deal is for just 20 homes in Porter, Texas, but this is a big first step. When you buy a new house straight from the developer, you basically get a sheet with a bunch of boxes you can tick off depending on what configuration of rooms you want, what materials you like for the floors and countertops. Imagine if Tesla Solar was just another box you could check off and the system would just be there waiting for you on move-in day. That's a game changer. Finally, we've got this British police car that was reportedly purpose-built by Tesla themselves. It looks like Tesla has plans to introduce a whole line of emergency vehicles in the UK. There are already plenty of Tesla police cars out there. Many police departments have done the math and figured out that they could save a lot of money by upgrading their fleets to Tesla vehicles, especially the Model 3. But with these projects, the police departments buy the vehicles from Tesla and have them modified to fit their needs as patrol cars. In this case, Tesla has apparently built the police vehicle itself and plans to offer it for testing to emergency services across the UK. Tesla didn't reveal any specs on this particular car, but judging by the Uber turbine wheels, it's probably a Model 3 performance, which makes a lot of sense for a police car. They're faster than pretty much any other car on the road and still deliver over 300 miles of total range. Either way, it looks really cool. I like the look of these European police cars much better than what we have in North America. And this has potential to be a major revenue stream for Tesla, finally getting into supplying vehicle fleets. Hopefully when Giga Berlin gets going at full speed, there will be finally enough production capacity to do things like this. By the way, don't forget about the awesome power of news and letters combined into one to form the Tesla Space Newsletter. Delivers all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and of course Neuralink in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to sign up is in the description below. It's the teslaspace.com. Once you sign up, be sure to check your promotions tab to make sure our emails are going to your main inbox. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.